Hello, and welcome to another episode of Django CMS User's Guide. I am Lisa King of Imaginary Landscape, and today we'll be looking at the ins and outs of the admin panel, which lets you take care of all kinds of site management business. The admin panel is called up through the options under the first menu to the right of the Django CMS logo, which we have here configured to be called the Apps menu. For you, it may display your site name. Selecting Administration under that menu opens up the side panel, showing links to the Django tools on your site that you have permission to manage. So, obviously, the links on this screen will be different for everyone. What we're interested in here today is the panel itself, which opens up over the page you are browsing. It's important to note that we're looking at version 3.2.3 here. The look of the panel has changed in recent releases, so if you're running an older version, it will look a little different, but the essential functionality remains the same. So, let's take a look at the panel controls. If you move your cursor over to the right-hand margin of the panel, you'll see that it changes into this resizing icon. When the icon looks like this, you can click and drag to make it bigger or smaller. Older versions allowed the same resizing function using this little handle in the middle of the panel edge. Older versions also have these panel control tabs, allowing you to snap it full open and back again, tuck it away, and open again, and close it all together. In 3.2.3, .3, these arrows in the upper right-hand corner of the panel allow you to navigate back and forth through screen views when you've been working in the panel and built up some history. So here I can click into a tool screen, and then clicking on the back arrow will take me back to the main list. Then I can click on the forward arrow to return to the tool screen. These arrows are new and will not be found in older versions. Clicking on the X will close the panel and clear its history, as will clicking off the panel and onto the page itself. Again, under the Apps or Site menu, if you select Pages, it will open up the admin panel showing the site tree. This is a list of all the pages in your site that are managed by the CMS. The arrangement of the pages in this list affects their URL and the site navigation. The top page on this list is your home page, indicated now by this house icon, previously by this tree icon. The URL for this page is your domain. Any other page listed at the top level will have the URL with one step added to the domain. For example, slash resources. You could keep all the pages on your site at this level, but it's often helpful to organize your pages into sections that make sense for you and your users. You can do this by nesting pages under other pages. Nesting pages add steps to the URL. Here we have slash resources slash changes. Any page that has pages nested under it will show this plus or minus sign to the left of it, which will toggle to hide or show its children. You can drag and drop to rearrange things by clicking on this handle at the end of the row. The black arrow shows you where the page will end up if you drop it there. Dropping a page on top of another page will nest it, and then you can drag it back out to unnest it. As I said, the organization of the pages affects the site navigation. Any page at this top level is a candidate for appearing as a top link in the site navigation. Whether or not it does appear is indicated in this menu column. This gray box indicates the page is not included in the navigation. This green box with the check marks indicates that it is. In previous versions, it was a red circle for not and a green circle for yes. 
You can see here that we have six top-level pages, but only three are flagged to display in navigation. And indeed, only three pages are showing up in the nav. So let's make a change. If I move the last page in the navigation, which is resources, up between the other two and reload, the links in the navigation reflect that change. Resources is now the middle link. Changes made in the tree can require a page refresh to see them in your browser. So if you make a change and it doesn't show up immediately, click refresh and then you should see it. To add or remove a page from the navigation, all you need to do is click on its menu status icon. For example, let's add tools to the navigation. Click on its status icon, give it a moment, and there you see it. And you'll see the icon has toggled to reflect the change as well. A reminder that changes in menu status are made in draft mode and will not appear on the live site until the page is published again. So let's look at live and draft status, which are indicated by this column of dots. A green dot indicates a page that is live with no draft version. A pulsing blue dot indicates a page that has both live and draft version. And the gray dot indicates a page that is in draft only and has no live version. Clicking on these dots will give you options to change the page's live draft status right here. Draft can be published, a live page can be unpublished, and a page that has both a live and a draft version can be either published or unpublished. In older versions of the CMS, these options were shown on rollover without an initial click. Unpublishing a page makes it no longer visible to the public. If there was no draft version at the time, the live version becomes a draft version. If there was a draft version, then the live version is dropped, leaving the draft as it was. One other thing to note about the status column is that the column head is an indicator of language, EN here for English. If your site is configured to manage more than one language version of pages, there will be a column showing live draft status for each language. The unfilled circle indicates that no version of that page yet exists for that language. This first column of eyeballs is a new addition in version 3.2.3. Clicking on the eyeball for a page will take you there. The same functionality is available under the Live Draft Status icon. In earlier versions, you could do the same thing by clicking on the page title itself, which is a link. Other actions you can take on a page from the side panel include clicking on this gear icon. Previously, this pencil page icon to make edits to the page's settings, which includes title and meta description. More about all of that when we get into adding and editing pages. You can also choose to copy a page by clicking on the double page icon. This provides the ability to select where you want to paste the copy, currently with this paste under here link. In older versions, a series of arrows allowed you to select the placement more broadly in relation to the other pages, above, below, or beneath. Cutting a page by clicking on the scissors also allows you to choose where you want the page pasted. Clicking again allows you to back out if you want. If you simply want to delete the page, you can do that by clicking on the trash can, or in older versions, the red X. This will bring up a page listing the consequences of the deletion, all the parts included on the page, and any pages nested beneath it. Saying you're sure will complete the deletion. You can add a new page by using the Add Page button at the top of the panel. 
Clicking on that brings up the page settings form. Give it a title. Save. And the new page is added at the top level of the site at the bottom of the list. To add a page to a specific location, use the plus sign of the page you want the new page nested under. Of course, wherever the new page is added, you can always move it where you want it. The last column here provides a little bit of information about the page. Its publication date, whether or not there are any restrictions set on who can view it, who it was last changed by, what template it uses, and what site it belongs to, which is of interest if you are managing more than one site through the CMS. A couple of other useful aspects of this screen. If you have been granted appropriate permissions, you will see this Recover Deleted Pages link at the top of the panel. Clicking on that will bring up a list of all the pages that have been deleted off the site, showing the deletion date and the page title. Clicking on a deletion date will bring up the page's settings form, which allows you to change its details before restoring if you'd like. Click Save. A little glitch in the flow here. The first time you save won't return you to the main page list, but the second time will. Or you can use the back arrow at the top of the panel to do that. The page is restored to the position it held when it was deleted, which means if it is nested, you might not see it from your current view of the tree without drilling down to its position. Or you can use the search function to locate it. The search works off page titles, but not words in the content, so you'll need to have some sense of what the page is called in order to find it through the search. Clicking on this Reset Filter link will restore the full list. You can also use a filter to narrow what you see in the list by various aspects of the page. For example, I might choose to see only those pages which were last edited by a certain user. The list then includes only those pages and presents them without nesting. To restore the full list and its nesting, you can click on this Total Pages link. Other default page filter options include whether or not the page is included in the navigation, what template it uses, and whether or not it's a soft root. Soft roots deserve their own video, a topic for another day. The filter list can be configured to include other aspects. A couple we find useful are published draft status and scheduled publication expiration dates. Another topic for another day. Now, that's a lot of little bits of information, but I think you'll find it all makes sense when you log in yourself and play a little. Move things around, see what happens. I hope that you have found this information useful. Let us know if you have any questions or topic requests. The next topic on my list is adding and editing content. Again, I'm Lisa King of Imaginary Landscape, and it has been my pleasure.